Or in other words, if you do more work on an object, then it will start moving faster. This is Mr. Beatty from Columbia University. And this is Ivorno Ajibari from NYU. All right, so today we, what we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, give you a full understanding on work energy theorem. How many physical quantities do you see? Well, uh, five. What is physical quantity? Well, a physical quantity is just a measurement that we can make about an object that it tells us about a specific property of it. Like its temperature, for example, measures how hot it is or how fast the particles inside it are moving. And so physical mm -hmm. quantities, you mean, if I go give you an object, you'll be able to measure these quantities. Yes. An example would be, as you said, a mass. Well, uh, yeah. So we can measure of these quantities for any object that will tell us something about non-physical quantities what would be uh, the definition of non-physical quantities and also an example i mean a non-physical quantity would be one that you can't directly measure something more qualitative an example um i would say like you are a good student you are a genius well yeah that's more of an opinionated beautiful uh, that's more opinionated measurement than... So you cannot yeah. measure, in, you cannot take the beauty in the lab and measure it. Uh, and also there are uh, uh, differences between physical reaction and chemical reaction. What would be the physical reaction? Well, physical reactions are anything that are reversible. Like for example... Can I, okay, so for example, the ice turn to... Uh, ice turn into water... Can you reverse it? Well, yeah, of course. You can just take the block of water that was formed uh, and put it back into the freezer. So you can reverse it because there is no fundamental change in its properties yeah. as it changes the state. Chemical reaction. Chemical reactions are reactions that change the very arrangement of the molecules themselves. If I give you a wood, can you burn it? Well, yeah, I could burn wood or for example, I can melt copper in acid. Once I have that and I drain out the acid, all I have left is the residue of the copper. But can I piece that back together to form the coin again? No, because okay. the molecules themselves have been so fundamental the property. Form. Fundamental properties they are different. Okay. So yeah, that's all because a physical uh, reaction doesn't change the mo molecular arrangement, while a chemical reaction often does. But both reactions, one thing conserve momentum. Oh, energy. Uh, a mass? What about mass? Well, I mean, all of those are ways of saying the same thing. Yeah, that's true. Okay, now we have how many physical quantities? Five. Okay, some of them fundamental, some of them? Um, some of them are fundamental according to the society that we've made for describing fundamental And some of them are derived. Okay, can you put them in order? In my lifetime, I have to deal with human beings. In your lifetime, since you're so young, you're going to have to probably deal with robots. And robot, unlike human, is smart and dumb at the same time because they often lack common sense. So what does that mean? You have to give them precise information. Your main goal is to move this 100 centimeter to the left. Mm -hmm. Army robot, give me the instruction. Okay, so here is the condition. Yeah. We are trying to help people understand the work energy. I am 100 kilogram mass, so I have energy stored in my body. Mm -hmm. I can transfer energy by using what? Um, your own hands. I can transfer energy by using? Uh, force. Good. So, transfer energy doesn't guarantee work. Do a demo in just that transfer energy doesn't do any work. You want to move it this way, but you push it this way. You do zero work. Yeah. Well, I guess what you would have to do is push him in this way so that it's parallel to the ground or the table right over here and so that you move him 100 centimeters in the direction that the book is facing. Okay, so I have to transfer energy by using force mm -hmm. and the force has to act. The force has to parallel act parallel with respect to the, the x-axis or ground and the force has to act at the direction of the uh, in the direction of the displacement, which I want you to create. Okay. Now, this physical quantity is five physical quantity. Now, can you put them in order? By what? 
by by who is comes first, who is comes second, who is come who is so one causes the other, oh, cause and effect. Uh, you mean like which one is composed of the other? No, no, cause and effect. What causes okay. what? Well, this is newton meters, um, which is impulse. So oh no, there is no impulse here. Oh oh, this is momentum. This wait, is not momentum. Wait no, newton meter. Yeah, uh, that's oh that's work. Okay. Okay. So that's work, that's force, that's uh, velocity, that's acceleration, and that's displacement. So the f thing that comes first is the force that you're applying. Then what comes next is the acceleration. How do you... Is the acceleration of the book. Then what, co what comes next is the velocity of the book after being accelerated. And then after that, how much the book is displaced after finishing its movement. And finally, the total work that's been, uh, been done. Okay, so it's not gonna be like number one is the energy and number two is force. This is not energy. Oh, wait, this, this is, is energy. work. By, uh, this is energy by work. But still, so can can you is this an improvement? The outcome is the displacement. Well, you could say it is. Uh, can you write the physical quantity name of the physical quantity uh, below the one, two, three, and four and five? Well, right here you'll notice this is newton meters, which is work. So just write W. Um, right here, you'll mute it and notice this is Newton, so this is force. Uh, just write the fast word. Okay. Fast letter. Uh, right here, you'll notice this is meters per second squared, which is acceleration. This is meters per second, which is velocity, and this is meters per distance. Okay, great. Excellent. Now, can you now convert whatever we say that we say that the work is, what is work? I have to transfer energy by using force and the force has to act at the direction of the displacement and the force has to also act parallel with respect to the x-axis. Can you convert this mouthful to an equation? Well, instead of blah, 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 can you write it in the equation? We have the work, the work done is equal to the amount of energy you applied in the form of force from your hand times the distance you were able to move it using your hand. I mean, if you only moved it this much, you didn't do as much work as if you moved it this much. You mean displacement? Yeah, of course, distance, displacement. And then, uh, well, and you said parallel. Can you put parallel in the middle? One second. Then, we have cosine theta. Why? Why not sine theta? Well, think of it this way. If the angle between the force and the displacement that you want to achieve is 90 degrees, look what happens. You want to move it this way, but you push it this way. You do zero work. Yeah. And if I'm holding it like this, I want to push it this way, but I do it this way. You do zero work. Yeah. I haven't moved it in the direction that I want to. So it has to be cosine theta. Okay, great. Yeah, this actually has to be with. Okay, as the angle between the force and the distance approaches closer to zero, cosine theta will approach closer to one. In other words, basically, if you align the force with the direction that you want to move the object in, then the actual work that you've done will increase. Of course, if I want to move it in this direction, I get no results when I do this, mixed results if I do this, but good results if I do this. Is that work is equal to the force dot the distance. And the second thing that we know from basic kinematics is that if we're applying a constant force, then Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2AD. In other words, we 
have. No, separate, uh, isolate AD. Otherwise, you're not gonna solve, solve your purpose. Oh, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I could just isolate. This is such an annoying word. So then, of course, all, all you have to do is write that since F is equal to MA, all you have to do is substitute this in, and you get half uh, M times VS squared minus VI squared, which is, of course, just half MVF squared minus half MVI squared, which is just the change in kinetic energy. So the work done specifies the change in kinetic energy, or in other words, if you do more work on an object, then it will start moving faster. So if I only push it a little, the Einstein basically stops immediately. But if I push it a lot, you can see it slide for a moment before stopping, like this. Or if I push it really hard, you'll see it slide all the way to the physics book even after I've stopped pushing it. So that's how work changes the kinetic energy. In this case, I'm changing the kinetic energy from rest to a high velocity in, a, in the fraction of a second that I'm exerting my work over. But if I exert it over a much longer time, like then, if I exert the force over a much longer time, like this, you will see that the change in kinetic energy is even longer. Oh, is that is still on this too. So, it's a steel cube with mass 10 kilograms on a steel floor. Find the FS max and FK. How does that have anything to do with what we just made? No, no. Do it okay. quickly. Well, the maximum force of static friction is just equal to the maximum coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal, uh, of static friction times the normal force, which is just the normal force, since we're sitting on a flat plane, is just going to be equal to, assuming that this is parallel to the ground, mg will be acting downwards this way, which means that fn will be acting parallel to it, with the same, uh, anti-parallel to it with the same magnitude. So we have mg right over here. So then all we have to do is look up the value of mu s max for a steel object on another steel object, which says that it's 0 0.74. The mass of this steel object is 10 kilograms, and G is 9.8, which is 72.52 newtons uh, to move this object. FK. So, to find the kinetic force, the amount of force that you need to keep applying to stop it from coming to rest, that just mu K, which is constant, times the normal force. The normal force is the same, 98 newtons, while the kinetic coefficient of friction, which I have to search up, is 0.57. Yes, it's unitless. So we get 56 newtons. Now, can you find work done by applied force, work done by friction, work done by gravity, and work done by normal force? Well, here's the thing. Gravity and the normal force cancel each other out, which means that this object doesn't move in the vertical direction at all. It only moves in the horizontal direction. So you can erase everything or you can change the color? Meaning that MZ and FN each do no work. Meanwhile, the applied force, well, I don't know what the applied force is. 100 Newton. Okay, so let's say we're constantly applying 100 newtons parallel to the ground in this direction. Well, what's happening here? Ooh, mixed up. If the applied force is 100 newtons, then what's happening to our object? 
we still have a kinetic friction of 56 newtons acting on it behind its back. Now, I don't know, like, how long are we, how much time are we measuring? Oh, that doesn't matter. You are going to find the network. That's it. The network? Yeah, work. Oh, t it moves only 10 meters. Oh, okay. Has a force of 100 newtons applied on it over a length of 10 meters, which means that the work done is 1,000 newton meters. Now, Can we call it Joule? Sure. Now, the work done by friction is F dot D which is 56 newtons times 10 meters, but since it's acting in the opposite direction, cosine theta is negative one, since cosine of 180 degrees is negative one. So that means that we just have negative 560 joules of work done. That's it.